Today we're going to talk about adaptive evolution, and that means that today is going to be all about the different kinds of natural selection. Adaptive evolution is not about the survival of the fittest. That is a phrase invented by Herbert Spencer in the 19th century that has had a long shelf life, and it's wrong. Adaptive evolution is about design for reproductive success. It's all about how many children and grandchildren you have and whether you do it better than somebody else that's in the population. It's always relative. Natural selection is like uh, the tale about the Buddhist monk and the disciple who were attacked by the tiger. And the disciple says to his master, oh, master, we're going to be killed because we cannot possibly outrun the tiger. And the master says, no, I just have to run faster than you. Well, selection is always relative. Okay, it always depends on the st what the picture is of reproductive success in that population at the time that it's happening. Now, I'm then going to discuss when selection is strong and when it can be slow, and I will tell you something about the rates, the units in which evolutionary rates are measured, and then I'll run through types of selection. Now, there are going to be two questions that pose puzzles that come up in this lecture. One is going to be, what will happen if directional selection continues for a long time? Can that continue? And if it has to stop, then why should it stop? And the other question will be, how can we explain that even though evolution can really be extremely fast, that sometimes things don't change for hundreds of millions of years? So you have to be able to come up with enough intellectual tools to be able to handle that range of variation in evolutionary outcome. Both of those things really do happen. Nothing for a long period of time or incredibly fast. So here's incredibly fast, antibiotic resistance. It is a curious and striking cultural fact that in the United States, when people talk about antibiotic resistance in television and in the newspapers, they almost never mention the word evolution. They say it emerges or it develops. But in fact, this is the poster child for rapid evolution. If you can see here roughly the years in which antibiotic resistance emerged, evolved in these diseases, if we develop a new drug and release it in the UK in 2009, resistant strains of bacteria will have evolved and will be in hospitals in the UK within six months. And those resistant strains of bacteria will be observed in hospitals in Hong Kong within two years. The bacteria will have moved around the earth as people move around the earth. The drug industry is in a co-evolutionary arms race to try to keep up with the bacteria as they evolve resistance, and we have gradually been losing the arms race. So if you read in the newspapers about multiply resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which is MRSA, it is starting to crop up now out in the community. It's not just confined to the hospital emergency wards and intensive care units anymore. It's starting to spread. And if Staph aureus picks up resistance to vancomycin, and which is one of our last lines of resistance against it, it's going to be very difficult for surgeons to do operations in the confidence that they can keep their patients from dying after they have surgery. So this is serious stuff. Most resistant bacteria live in hospitals because that's where most antibiotics are used. And the number of hospital-acquired infections is about 2 million per year in the United States, and it's estimated that about 90,000 people who did not have a bacterial infection when they went into the hospital got in the hospital and then died from that bacterial infection. And in fact, it looks like this is a serious underestimate because this is the official report, but if you look at what the hospitals ask for in terms of money from the insurance industry, it's about 10 times higher than that. Okay. So, by comparison, this is how many people are dying in 2005 from AIDS in the United States, influenza, and breast cancer. And you take that and you multiply it to the planet, and you can see that the evolution of antibiotic resistance is a pretty serious issue. 
The economic burden in the US four years ago was 80 billion a year. And this is a problem which is caused by strong directional natural selection eliciting a rapid evolutionary response. So in the next few slides, I'm going to be talking about what I mean by directional and what I mean by rapid. By rapid, in this case, if uh, you have a normal sized bacterial population in your body, and I give you an antibiotic, the probability is that if you don't do your antibiotic treatment correctly, within about a week or two, you will have resistant bacteria in your body. Finish your antibiotic treatments. Never stop in the middle, okay? Kill them all off. 